Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Seven Rivers Health. I'm Rick TC, your host. On this week's edition of our program, we're going to be showing you the brand new Center for Breast Care at Mayo Clinic Health System. We're going to give you a tour and we're going to talk about all that's going to be going on in this new facility and location at the hospital here. Here with me is Dr. Kathleen Christian. She is a provider here in the Center for Breast Care. And Dr. Christian, thanks for joining us for this. Glad to be here. Exciting. It's very exciting. Very exciting. A lot of years in the waiting and we're excited to be here. Talk a little bit about, you know, let's talk about how we got to this point. Um, how exciting is this? And well, what will be in store for patients coming here compared to the old location? I really think the difference is two main things. One is just um, meeting more of the comfort needs of the patients. Even from walking in the door with the colors, the design, we really just want the patients to feel welcome and um, feel comfortable at ease. So even looking at the colors, just the furniture, we hope you come in, feel very welcome and at ease from the beginning. Because we know that um, whenever you come to a medical facility, it can be a very stressful, emotional, anxiety-provoking visit. Um, the other thing is we really looked at patient privacy. What can we do to maintain patient privacy during the entire patient visit that day? So we looked at hallways, um, how close a patient might have to walk from one doorway to the other, um, what type of space we have for them to be sitting in, even the angles within the doorways, the exam tables. We really wanted to maintain as much patient privacy as we could. Well, yeah, go ahead, keep going, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I think the other thing we're really looking forward to is the close proximity of the providers um, to the patient that day of their care. That um, with the ancillary staff, with the physicians, we're all going to be in very close proximity to each other, which will really help collaboration. We'll be able to know if a, how a certain room is running that day, where a patient might be in, in their entire workup and really be able to communicate with each other and um, share that information right away with results as well as just where the patient is in their visit. Now, the old compared to the new, what about the old um, as far as how was that compared to this? I mean, like you said, it's going to be much more easy for the patients. It's going to be much more easier for the providers and the staff to be working together. Was it kind of just kind of, I don't want to say discombobulated, but just kind of just tough to get from one place to another in, in the old portion? Well, in the old facility, we had a wall between the imaging aspect as well as the from the clinical aspect. So there, there was a wall, and that wall had a lot of barriers to it before, besides just the physical barrier. Um, just being able to communicate for me with the radiologist, you have to go behind the reception area, go to the radiology area. You'd, I didn't always know where the radiologist was at that time. How soon would they be out of a patient room? Do I, do I stand there and wait, or do I get back to the patient that might be in the exam room? So that wall had a lot of barriers for us as uh, we are the healthcare providers taking care of the patient that day, but also as a barrier for the patient because they had to move from one side, also go around that wall, and come over to the exam room. So um, the wall really did have a lot of barriers that we found impacted the patient's care. Now we're in basically the waiting area right now. What a warm setting with the rocks in the background and this, I mean, kind of kind of go along with what you see here. I love the wall. I was mm -hmm. going to say, that's your favorite part, yeah. isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, more homely feeling, more comfortable feeling, you said? Absolutely. And um, when we looked at the space, we really allowed the space um, for the patient's areas as much as we could. Interestingly, if some of the areas might be smaller as far as offices or working spaces, we really try to make the needs of the patient come first. So a, a lot of these areas are designed for making the needs of the patient come first. How many uh, for the uh, mammography rooms? It's still the same number we you have currently in the, in the old and to the new, correct? Which is two? Two mammography machines uh, currently. Actually, probably going to be adding a third one. Wow. And one ultrasound machine currently. What is, uh, and then of course you have the mobile mammography vehicle mm -hmm. as well at, at your hands just in case you need that as well. The exam rooms, again, are almost kind of the same as the, this room here, where it's the brown colors, the textures. 
Is that just, again, for that comfort to the patients? Well, again, warm and inviting to make them feel as relaxed as they possibly can that day. Mm -hmm. Whatever we can to help maintain that, that comfort level we did. We know we can't take away all the anxiety, but we did what we could with colors, um, with just the design of the furniture. Again, just the angle of the, the bed with the doorway. Um, and also, how can we accommodate family more easily in the exam room as well. Did you, did you get some respect or get some observations from patients before going to this of what they were looking for in a new center? Sure, we've been surveying our uh, patients uh, for um, a couple years and as we've made different changes, even the old facility survey, what impact that, that had on them. So we've uh, really always listened to the voice of our patients and what they really want to see. We'll talk to the plastic surgery department here in a little bit, but from your perspective, how much hand in hand is that going to help for you guys to be in the same area? Well, I think just wonderful, just having, again, another health care provider that you're working with frequently, being a few doors away, to be able to just ask a quick question for it. You can maybe answer that question for the patient right away versus having to wait until um, you can approach each other at a different time and, and make a phone call back. So I think it's just going to ease that, that working uh, together um, in the same area and um, just convenience for the patient as well. Maybe they don't have to move from one building to the another area to see um, both of us in the same, same day. What do you think the patient's reaction is going to be when they walk in here? I hope they're just as excited as we are um, and find it just as beautiful. Mm -hmm. And for yourself, I mean, this has been a long time coming. I mean, this has been a long process for you and for the department itself. Well, a long time coming just because every every business has priorities they have to set every year. So um, as we looked at this, um, we've always known it's been important, but it finally really made that priority list to let's, let's meet the needs of the patient, both within the Center for Breast Care and within plastic and reconstructive surgery. Dr. Christian, thanks for joining us. Thanks for inviting us and showing us around a little bit. We are happy you're here. Giving you a part about this. Dr. Christian, thanks for joining us. We'll have more coming up on Seven Rivers Health. LASIK surgery at Mayo Clinic Health System. Well, I was very nearsighted. Um, I couldn't see three feet in front of me without things being blurry, so I had to wear glasses. We screen patients. We try to make sure that they're appropriate candidates for LASIK, that their prescription is within the range, that it's reasonable to do it, uh, that they have a good understanding of what they can expect, that they have a good understanding of what the benefits are and what the risks are. For more information on LASIK surgery, contact Mayo Clinic Health System. A night of unforgettable wrestling action for a great cause. River City Championship Wrestling presents a benefit for Cody's Bucket List. Live, August 15th, 7 p.m. at the Lacrosse American Legion. All proceeds go towards Cody Davis, a 12-year-old boy with degenerative optic nerve atrophy. UIWA Midwest Championship is on the line as Butchie Davis defends against Kid Riot in a Lego match. Tickets, $10 for adults, $5 for kids, and children 5 and under get in free. Mix 96. And now you can get it. You can get Mix 96 on your smartphone wherever you go. Just download the free TuneIn app and listen on your smartphone. You're gonna miss me when I'm gone. With your free TuneIn app, you never have to miss a single song on Mix 96. This is gonna be the best day of my life. Now Mix 96 goes where you go with today's best music mix. I can Hi everyone, welcome back to Seven Rivers Health. Again, we are in the new Center for Breast Care and also in this area is plastic surgery. Here with me is Dr. Matthew Sherrill. He is the provider, one of the main providers for the plastic and reconstructive surgery. Yes. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you for having me. Um, how excited are you for this new facility you open up? This is a very nice facility. Um, you know, I've been on board here for about two years. And when I was coming here, they had already work, plans in the works to do this. So it's been nice to be part of the production of this. And it's really exciting to kind of have our own center and design it how we wanted. How, how did you, how, what kind of a role did you play in the design process for yourself? Um, well, we actually col uh, collaborated with all the different services, mammography, the radiologists, uh, Dr. Christian and the breast cancer service, the nurses. And we would have meetings to design the space how we thought it was best fit, both for our needs, but also the patient's needs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 
When you get a space to fill, I mean, you want to make it the space that is perfectly designed for the patient. How is this perfectly designed for the patient from your perspective? Well, I think the, what Dr. Christian has alluded to in the past is uh, the patient privacy. That was one of the biggest things. We had a, a list of priorities when we designed the space, and that was way uh, high on the priority list. And it's nice because we have a lot of subweight areas in the back. It's one, you, know, you come in and check in here, but it's not like you're sitting in this waiting room the whole time. Once you kind of go back, you're in your own personal space back there. Your interactions with the providers and the staff, it's all individualized. And so it's nice because the patients don't feel like they have to be shuffled around and wait. Once they kind of get back to the you know, meat of the visit, then they can be kind of carried through the process all the way back there and feel comfortable during the process. Dr. Christian talked about the old facility, which was the patient would have to go from one place to another place, back to another place. For, from your perspective, for, for, your, for your patients and such, how will this benefit them instead of having to go back and forth, basically being in here? Well, I think the collaboration um, is the key to this. Having mammography, radiology, uh, Dr. Christian and myself all in the same facility, we're able to interact with each other and actually shuffle patients back and forth. There's often times where patients will get a new diagnosis of breast cancer and rather than having to come back to see me, we try to coordinate our schedules so we're in clinic at similar times. And if a patient wants to talk about reconstruction, I'm available that day, I can work under my schedule. Or, you know, Dr. Christian has a question about an upcoming procedure, we have time to visit for it. There's often times after reconstruction, too, that if there are problems that occur, we have the radiologist there to help us make those diagnoses. And then from the, the front end of that standpoint, to make the diagnosis of the breast cancer and to be able to see the surgeon and the reconstructive surgeon right there at the same time is very convenient for the patient. It's also convenient for us, too. What, uh, for the reconstructive side of things, are you seeing more patients wanting to do the reconstruction um, or not? Yes and no. You know, Dr. Christian is probably the one who probably could answer that question better. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, my referrals come from her. And certainly she has a lot of people that are sent to me for reconstruction. And I would say the majority of patients that I've seen for reconstruction choose to do that. Um, you know, it's certainly a personal decision and there's all kinds of factors involved. And the nice thing about reconstruction is we have all types of options. And they can do them immediately or we can do them in a delayed fashion. So often I'll tell my patients that, you know, while it's nice to do the immediate reconstruction and kind of get that process underway, if they want to deal with their cancer and take care of that, we can still offer them reconstruction in the future. How tough of a process or discussion is that with patients? Are they more open to listening to that, that offering or that opportunity or is it? Uh... I think so. There's been a big push for breast cancer awareness in this country. And so people are very aware of that, of reconstruction options. Um, there's um, a big push too for having these immediate reconstructions so that the, the patients can have a sense of wholeness and a sense of fulfillment so that they don't have to um, live with the mastectomy defects and have no breasts. It's nice to have an immediate reconstruction so that when they wake up, they've already started the process. And while it may not be their end result, there's a psychological aspect of that to wake up with something that resembles a breast so that you have that sense of wholeness that you're, you could be a breast cancer survivor and still feel very feminine. Not only will you do, you do the, the breast reconstruction, but I mean, you do a lot of other plastic surgery and reconstruction as well. Talk a little bit about, about that as well. So the breast reconstruction is a big part of what I do here, and that's the reason for us being here. But breast surgery is also a big part of what I do as well, breast reductions. You know, patients with enlarged, heavy breasts, they have heavy ba or back and neck pains that uh, are problematic, and I get many referrals from the primary care doctors that ladies have lived with it for years, and they come to see me, and I'm able to offer them a solution. And it's almost it's one of my favorite surgeries because the, the patients are very happy afterward. Most of the time, it relieves almost completely their back and neck pain, and it's always good to have a happy patient. <laughs> See, I bet that. Then we do, uh, you know, cosmetic surgery too, breast augmentations. I mean, certainly that's an offering that we d we uh, give the patients as well, and that kind of correlates with mammography as well. I mean, if you're going to augment a patient, you want to make sure that they don't have cancer, so that they don't have a discovery that's unfortunate. So it's nice to have those facilities available to take care of all those things in one setting. And then in addition, the other parts of my practice is hand surgery and all the other soft tissue surgeries that we do as well. So uh, it'll be um, a, mi a big mix for me. I'll, even though it's the breast center, I still do, you know, the majority of my practice um, is going to become seen to this patient's. And clinical, patient clinical setting wise, is this a perfect fit for yourself as well? Just for all the, I mean, not only the breast stuff, but also the other, uh, yes. the other reconstruction stuff. Right. 
like we talked about, um, the patient convenience is kind of the biggest factor that we went into designing this. So it's nice to have a space and you've worked in a space that wasn't quite right before. So to say, these are the things we'd like to do better. These are the things we'd like to have for the patients. Um, simple ergonomics as, you know, instead of having the patients having to walk in front, back and forth in front of the patients, we've kind of put them in the room so that any interactions we can leave and go without having to inconvenience them or step across them. To design the beds so that when we do an examination, we're not having to shuffle around and it makes it convenient for them. And then to design a procedure room so that there's a lot of things that I can do in the office that don't necessarily need a trip to the operating room. And to have a facility to be able to do that is very nice because I can offer the patients to do outpatient surgery and um, save them the cost of anesthesia and make it a uh, quicker recovery for them. Excited about being in here? Yeah, it's nice. I bet it is. I bet it is. I think, you know, it, it's nice to be able to design the, the space and it's not like an architect come and stuck it in here. We collaborated with the architects, with the nurses. We looked at flow diagrams. We looked at, you know, just how the furniture looks and to have a nice, warm, inviting environment. That was the, the nice part of designing this is we got to have input onto how it looks and what we want our patients to see, the image that we're projecting towards the patients. It's we were able to choose that and put this forward to the patients. So when they come in, they feel welcome and they feel like this is a you know a home that they can come and feel comfortable in. Did it fill up to live up to the image? Yeah, Perfect. we had an open house the other day with um, the whole medical staff, and we had a very big turnout. Everyone, the feedback said that it's a really nice space. They really liked it. Dr. Some are even envious. Sounds good, Dr. Cheryl. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. And Richard. thank you for joining us. More on Sumner Rose Health after this. LASIK surgery at Mayo Clinic Health System. You can, I can see, I don't have to wear my glasses for driving, uh, to go to the movies, for reading. And uh, I think it's a wonderful thing to offer people uh, that freedom and uh, independence of lenses, whether they're contact lenses or glasses, to be able to function every day from the morning to the evening and not just, and not think about it. For more information on LASIK surgery, contact Mayo Clinic Health System. Mix 96. And now you can get it. You can get Mix 96 on your smartphone wherever you go. Just download the free TuneIn app and listen on your smartphone. You're gonna miss me when I'm gone. With your free TuneIn app, you never have to miss a single song on Mix 96. This is gonna be the best day of my life. Now Mix 96 goes where you go with today's best music mix. I can a night of unforgettable wrestling action for a great cause. River City Championship Wrestling presents a benefit for Cody's Bucket List. Live, August 15th, 7 p.m. at the Lacrosse American Legion. All proceeds go towards Cody Davis, a 12-year-old boy with degenerative optic nerve atrophy. UIWA Midwest Championship is on the line as Butchie Davis defends against Kid Riot in a Lego match. Tickets, $10 for adults, $5 for kids, and children five and under get in free. Welcome back to Seven Rivers Health with TC, your host. We are here in the Center for Breast Care here at Mayo Clinic Health System. And here with me now is Natasha Waxland, and she is an RN here at the Center for Breast Care. Um, and she's a, kind of a big person around here, you know. She, she knows the area left and right, so that's why we had her on the show. Natasha, thanks for joining us. Me. First off, long process to getting this place going. Yes. How excited are you? We, as a group, are very excited. It is a long process, about two years in the making. Um, lots of meetings, lots of uh, collaboration, and uh, a lot of disciplines all together to make it what it is today. Dr. Christian said that this was uh, this is for the patient. Mm -hmm. Talk about why this is such an important thing. What you did, you did it for the patients. And we did. We looked at, um, there are three areas here that, um, and we looked at for all patients, but really we kind of focused on the breast cancer patient. You know, you start diagnosis, radiology, going right into meeting with the, the breast surgeon and then potentially offering plastic surgery, all right here together. So the patient comes to one place and they can really get um, a majority of their needs met. And they talked about the fact that this is kind of like a, one of those areas that just, it, it's a privacy area. Mm -hmm. It's more a way so that patients who are coming here to have their mammograms done, it's more of a friendly setting type mm -hmm. of thing. Talk about how, how it was now 
compared to what it will be here? You, how, how big of a change do you think it's going to be for patients? Well, it is big. Um, before, it was very fragmented. They were, you know, we had walls in between the, the different places that a patient would need to be. We would need to be walking them behind the reception area, maybe to flow between one area to another. So really, we, we captured the patient back here. We keep them back in, back behind the scenes, but still getting all of their needs met, meeting with um, everybody flowing from one appointment to the next. So the patient's not waiting here or waiting in, waiting days in between patient or in between appointments. We're really just all together and really have that patient first and, and doing what we can to, to keep them comfortable, to keep their family. You know, we have a bigger area here where we can have family with them at these appointments because that's, that's what's important to the patient is um, being supported and getting what they need. How about, I mean, how about for you guys? I mean, mm -hmm. behind the scenes, they'll, I mean, you see the patients, but for you guys in particular, I mean, brand new nurses station where it's, you know, I, I think it, to me it seems a little bit more a better flow for you guys? It is. It's a much better flow and we're together, which before we would be talking on the phone constantly or running back and forth down the hall constantly. That took us away from patients. Um, it took us away from what we needed to do. So, so now we're we're together. We're a, a chair turned away from each other. Uh, no, no throwing aspects. like air paper airplanes right. or right. like like that. That's good. Right. That's good. How about um, you know, uh, you know, you're, you're opening tomorrow, which mm -hmm. is July 29th, right? Thirtieth. Excuse mm -hmm. me, July thirtieth. Um, do you think the anticipation is going to live up to? the billing for patients, do you think, or you hope? We hope it exceeds. Exceeds. Yes, That's we hope we word. exceed the anticipation and the expectations of the patient. Um, you know, we've been trying to inform them as we've been seeing them uh, here, but um, we really hope that they see what we're trying to put forward and that is that their, their needs are what's most important and what we really try to address here. What do you think their response or what would you, what do you, what do you think their reaction is going to be when they come in here? Do you think it's going to be like, oh, wow? It, I mean, you've seen that reaction already mm -hmm. from some people already. We have. What we really hope is if we can make a an, an unpleasant appointment um, a little more tolerable, and and we hope that we can make them feel comfortable and welcome, and and that that we're here for them. And this will hopefully help open the door for maybe other women mm -hmm. who have not gotten their mammograms done to possibly come in as well, correct? Right, right. Um, and again, people should be getting the mammograms when? Yearly. Yearly. Mm -hmm. Yearly. Natasha, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us for another edition of Seven Rivers Health. I'm Artis, your host. Be healthy, everyone. <laughs>